Hi, I'm Kent. I think I have a completed one-piece mold system. Recently, I have been working on some software that can take a profile sketch of a pot, basically a 2D outline, and then converting that into all the 3D models we need to make a slip casting mold. So the idea is you draw your sketch, the software does all of the magic processing and spits out a bunch of STL files that you can then print out assemble and pour plaster into. Once the plaster is set, you can disassemble the 3D printed pieces and you now have a new plaster mold that you can slip cast into. I've been slowly iterating on this and adding some new features and I think I am most of the way done. There's always room for improvement, but I think I have a functional system now. Let's go ahead and try it out. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and remake the first pot I did with a 3D printed form in this series. I want to go ahead and take advantage of all the improvements I've made. By the way, all of these videos are in a playlist. If you haven't been able to check them all out, go ahead and look at that and you can see them all in order. I want to remake this plaster mold here. I originally made that using this 3D printed piece. This has the form for the pot that started with the sketch, which I'll show you in a second, as well as a slip well that was added automatically. I then secured that down into a bucket, poured the plaster around it. That lets me slip cast pots like this, which are then fired into a final form like this. This mold has served me well, but as I said, I want to go ahead and remake it so I can use my latest features. So let me show you how that works. Here's the profile sketch I started with. This is basically the contour of the outside of the pot. The software takes this, which is an SVG file, and does all the modeling from it. I'm working on a web preview of this. The idea is that eventually I want to turn all the software into a web app so all you guys can use it. In the meantime, this is a little bit more manual, so you can go ahead and send me an SVG file and I can do all of this. Anyway, so this is web preview. So this basically takes that sketch and then revolves it so that we can create the form. So this is what the pot looks like. If we wanted to, we could say modify the foot. So here I made the foot crazy big for some reason. So we can reload this and the outside looks the same. We didn't modify it at all, but if we look down here on the bottom, the foot's now clearly exaggerated. I doubt you really want to make a form like that, but that shows the idea. The idea is to be able to quickly iterate and put that back and then jump over here into 3D and see what it looks like. As I mentioned, the software takes that one SVG file, does all the 3D modeling, turns that into STL files that you can then put print on your 3D printer. And here are all the pieces that get printed out for my mold system. We'll go through these one by one. First up, this one probably looks the most familiar. This is the inner mold. It is very similar to this piece. I've made a few small improvements. One, I rounded off the corner here so that the top of the plaster is a little bit better. I also added a little ring here that we'll use to connect all the pieces and you'll see all of these brass pieces. These are threaded inserts. The original model didn't have any of that. We had to silicone it down. So the software went ahead and took the form and scaled it up. What I want you to draw is actually the final pot size. So it's actually this size here. And the software then takes your clay shrinkage factor and scales it all up adds the slip well, everything else that we need, again, all automatically. If you want, you can go ahead and use this as is. All these are separate STL files, so if you upload the SVG file, it'll go ahead and process these, and you can basically ignore all this and just put this in a bucket or build some cuddle boards around it. The way this prints is actually like this. This is the way we're gonna pour plaster into it, even though it's upside down. And the idea is that we can have all of the rough surfaces from the supports on the inside. So I did print this with supports. I went ahead and removed them. But that means this outside surface here is basically as good as we can get. There's fewer artifacts from the printing by printing it this way. And just one quick note, you'll see some artifacts in this. I've done that on purpose. I'm kind of liking the style of the 3D print. If you want, you can go ahead and print this on finer settings and go ahead and prime it and sand it. I recommend this primer here. It's used for cars, so you can basically put it down. It's relatively thick. You can then sand it down. It smooths things out relatively nicely. You can then progress through a bunch of sanding grits and go ahead and actually get a nice polished surface. But as I said, I am kind of running with this 3D printed look for right now. So as I said, you can just take this and run with it. However, I've been working on an outer mold to go ahead and create nicer plaster molds. And that's what the rest of these pieces are for. The idea is that I can get an outer mold that gives me a nicer plaster form, gives me a consistent wall thickness, it uses less plaster, and I'll talk about that more in a minute, which is good for a couple different reasons. One is just more economically friendly and environmental friendly. It's also just nicer to pick up and move around. And I think it probably results in better slip cast parts because there's a uniform plaster wall thickness, although I'm not exactly sure about that. I haven't done any testing. So here's an example that I made in my last video. So this is a bowl form. It's kind of similar style, and you'll see that the plaster on the outside tapers down. So we're just using a whole lot less plaster. And when this is full of slip, getting rid of that extra weight is actually really nice. And it's just nicer to handle. Nice, smooth curves. I don't have to worry about the shape of the bucket that this was in or the cotton boards, et cetera. 
Ideally, we can just go ahead and pour the plaster, do zero cleanup, and once it's dry, go ahead and use it. So to create that outside mold, I have these outer mold pieces. So this comes in several parts, and the idea is that we will assemble them around the outside like this. That then creates the cavity that we'll pour the plaster into. So I have an option of creating this outer mold as one piece or as four pieces. The advantage of doing it in multiple pieces, well, there's a few. One is I can get around print volume issues. These molds get pretty big pretty fast, and this mold here would be too big to do as one piece in my printer. The other advantage is that it lets me basically detach the screws that we're gonna to use to assemble this and demold the outside very easily. They just peel straight off the outside as opposed to trying to slide the plaster out. The cost is there's a little bit of assembly required. This also prints this way. So from the pot's perspective, upside down. I tried to create these outside forms so they don't require any supports. If we needed supports, it would potentially be on the inside here, which is the side the plaster's on. This is the outside of the mold, so not really a critical surface. But without having the supports, it can print faster. So I'm basically cheating on the plaster thickness a little bit in the software to do that. I've also added a round over here. Again, that's to make a nicer top of the plaster mold. And because it is printed this way, sometimes there's a few artifacts in the very top of the mold. So you can see there where the overhangs aren't quite right. You could sand that out, but again, since the outside of the plaster, I'm not really worried about it. I have not done exhaustive testing. I've only tried a handful of forms. There may be forms where you actually do need to do the supports, or potentially you could print this the other way around. You could print it this way. That would then have the supports on the outside. The challenge there is that then this mating surface may not be exactly right. I don't know what the best thing is there. You guys are free to try it out and let me know in the comments which one works better. And finally, we need a way to attach this inside piece to the outside pieces. And that's what this ring is here. This was also printed in four pieces. It has the same diameter as the outside mold, so it has the same problem of not fitting on my print bed. This one I just super gluing together for right now. I'm not too sure if I'll stick with that solution, but it's good enough for now. It doesn't need to come apart from itself. It really just needs to come apart from the outside. So this winds up being the base. So once it's all assembled, I'll have this on the bottom, this inside ring gets screwed on, and then for all four outside pieces get screwed on, and we pour plaster in the middle. So this is all the pieces of the mold system. So let's go ahead and assemble that. So as I mentioned, there are these threaded inserts for mechanical fastening, and I've been using a rubber gasket to make sure it's plaster tight. This stuff right here, it's basically a neoprene rubber that can go down, it has uh, adhesive backing, it's meant for like weatherproofing, and this has been working well to hold back the plaster. To go along with the rubber gasket, there are actually features in the 3D print itself. So there's a little bit of a lip right here on the plaster side and then a recess. The gasket fits down in this recess, basically right over the threaded inserts. And then we have a mating face that's just 3D print to 3D print. So from the front, it looks like that. Basically the 3D print is squeezed together as much as it can be. And from the back, there's about a millimeter space for the gasket to go into that'll get squeezed down. And I should mention all the holes for the threaded inserts and the associated bolts are created automatically. This recess is created automatically. These flanges on the outside are all created automatically. Everything is generated from that initial sketch. That's the magic of using the system. All right, so that's all the pieces. So let's go ahead and do an assembly. So first, the gasket for the outside. So as I mentioned, this is sticky on the back. So just go ahead and put it down. Make sure it's not on the mating face. It's back in the little recess. Run it around. Just kind of bend it around the form. And then this will loop around the bottom as one continuous piece so there's not a space for plaster leak out there. Hold it back a few millimeters from this ed edge here. The corresponding recess is in the ring. And then back around this corner and up again and then just cut it off. So that's the gasket, we need to do that to all four of the outside pieces. I should mention that the threaded inserts are just standard threaded inserts meant for 3D printing and they're inset with a soldering iron. Basically, you just put it on the tip, heat it up a little bit, and then slowly push them in. For the bottom, there are two rings here, one for the outside to do the outside mold and one for the inside. This was one of the bugs I had in my previous video, this inside ring wasn't correct. Now I think it's right, so I can go ahead and use the rubber gasket and the threaded inserts like I was supposed to. Go ahead and run this around, using that step as a guide for placement. You'll notice I'm covering up all the little bolt holes. The screws can just punch right through this foam, it's very thin. So you don't need to pre-punch them or anything like that. 
and I've been overlapping this just a touch so there's not space for plaster to get out there either. That's the inside. And then same thing on the outside. All right, that one's done. This one's done. Let me go ahead and do the other three off camera. All right, that's the gasket on all the pieces, the inside and the outside of the ring, the four outside pieces. The inside has a ring of gasket as well. So basically every place that we mate, we have two layers of foam thick. So now we can start assembly using the threaded inserts and the screws. As I was getting ready, I went ahead and put a couple in the outside just to make sure that everything was working okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those and put this together roughly, and then I'll go back and follow through and put in the rest of the bolts. So I just kind of pinch it together, get it in about the right spot. And it'll punch through the foam and you can feel when it grabs. And I don't want these snug down all the way yet. I want to use the ring here to help with the alignment. All right, so here's the outside mold, just loosely attached. So I'm gonna take the inside mold and screw it down. That's good, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest just a little bit. All right, perfect. So this was one of the bugs I fixed. Last time I had to silicone that down. Now we can attach this assembly to the outside. And another bug I fixed was before I had it aligned so the seams matched. I didn't like that, so I want to be able to rotate it offset. All right, there we go. I have one screw all the way around in each segment. So that means now the alignment should be pretty good. So quickly I'm going to go around and put in the rest of the screws. All right, and that's the rest of the fasteners. Again, it may seem like overkill, but they actually go in really fast. Once everything's aligned, they just kind of sink right in. It's only those first few getting the pieces in the right spot. It's a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug these down the rest of the way, and then we can reset and get ready to pour plaster. All the bolts are tightened down. You have to be a little bit careful not to tighten them too much. The 3D print can be a little bit brittle, and you don't want to crack it. That would be a surefire way for the plaster to get out. Basically just want to make sure that the gasket is snug down all the way around. And there's our cavity. Since the software is doing all the modeling for us, it can also do all the plaster calculations for us as well. So this here will take just over two liters of plaster. And in contrast, my old mold took 3.67 liters. So we have a significant saving by using this outer shell here even though it's almost exactly the same form on the inside. So that's a big difference. So for the two liters of volume, it goes ahead and calculates how much water I need and how much dry plaster I need. It does a little bit of rounding up so that I make sure I have a little bit extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up now. So I'll take the dry and put it on the wet, let it slake for three and a half minutes. I'll then mix it for four and pour it in. Here's the plaster all mixed up and we pour it in. All right, that's pretty good. Good on the plaster calculation. All right, we'll go ahead and let this set and then come back to it about half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay, the plaster is all set. Let's see my bucket here. And even better, no plaster disasters. I see zero plaster on the outside here, except for a little bit I spilled while pouring in in the back. And it's cooling down, so let's go ahead and demold. So we're starting to zipping out screws. That should be the top ring. And indeed, it just came right off. And this is why we have the rubber gaskets, to so make sure the plaster doesn't get past that. It's good. All right, now we go around and do the sides. All right, I just split it in half. I'm guessing it's gonna come. There we go. So there's the outer mold. Looking really good. All right, so now we can see if we can get the inside mold out. This one's usually the harder one. So 
So rather than force it, I'm going to use my alcohol and water trick. So this here is a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water that's been in my freezer. So it's basically close to zero degrees Fahrenheit. And the idea is to pour it in the inner mold. That will shrink the PLA just a little bit and it should release. All right, I just filled that all the way to the top. I'll let it sit for just a couple minutes. Ice is starting to melt, so it's pulling the heat out. Oh yeah, there we go. It comes right up just like that. Dump it out. And now we can reuse this. And there we go, we have one brand new mold. So the top here is nicer still have a little bit of flash, kind of the plaster going over, but I rounded it off so it's nicer to handle. Be able to just run a putty knife over it real quick. Smooth it out a little bit more. And then the bottom edge here. Smooth it off real quick. And there we go. One brand new mold. So these molds are really great. I really like them. I don't see any bubbles in this, which is awesome. And we have a good copy of the inner mold. There's a couple of small bubbles on the outside, but that's the outside. And these molds are really great to handle. So for comparison, here is the original mold. So it's a much nicer, smaller mold. It's just gonna make it, just gonna make using it that much nicer. And at this point, we should be able to reuse the 3D printed mold to make another plaster mold if we wanted. Basically, we just wash off any plaster that's on here. There's some on here. The gasket should go ahead and be useful indefinitely, I'm guessing. Eventually, the holes that the bolts go into might strip out a little bit or compress too much, or the 3D inserts might have some problems, so it might need a little bit of touch-up. But I think this could probably last several plaster molds, it's my guess. That'll be something to test in the future. And the ring worked as well. So just like that, we go from sketch to finished plaster mold. I'm gonna call this done for right now. There are several things that could potentially be improved a little bit more. One is optimizing the print times so that it prints a little bit faster, maybe uses a little less PLA. There's a whole bunch of work on the software side to go ahead and make this more usable and ideally usable for you guys. However, that doesn't make very interesting YouTube content, so I'm probably not gonna focus on it right now. However, if you do want to use the software, do sign up to the waitlist that's in the description and feel free to email me an SVG and I will go ahead and give you the STL files back. That's my solution while I'm working on making the software a little bit more user friendly. And we still have limited print volume for the inside mold. We got around the print volume issue for the outside mold by splitting it into pieces and that's what we're gonna have to do to the inside mold as well. We're gonna have to split it into several smaller pieces that we can print and then assemble somehow. However, once we do that, we might as well go ahead and go to multi-part molds. That way we can actually separate the plaster as well and we can have much more complex shapes. Right now this is a one part mold system. That, that means we need a draft angle so we can pull out the original PLA master as well as later pull out the slip cast pot. By going to a multi-part mold system, well, in addition to getting the ability to do larger pots, that will also let us do things with undercuts that opens up a lot more form opportunities and something I wanna try and get to. So that's the next thing on my agenda to try and tackle. I think we've come a long way in this mold series and I am very happy with this mold system. If you have any questions or comments, do let me know, thanks.